I found another cool vintage electronics piece of test equipment. Welcome to Hack a Week. Hello and welcome back to the Hack Shack. We haven't been in here for a while, been out in the garage doing some things. Well, uh, last weekend, Lisa and I went to the Cameron Antique Festival. It's every year here in Cameron, North Carolina. It's just north of where we live. And uh, somebody always shows up with some old electronics. And this one caught my attention because it has a Magic Eye vacuum tube in it. It's an Ico model 147A signal tracer. Ico is uh, short for, well, the, the name of the company is EICO and that stands for Electronics Instrument Company. They started in the 40s and they made kits. They made electronics kits. You could also buy them pre-assembled from the factory, sort of like a Heath kit. And uh, in the 60s, maybe in the 50s as well, they were known for their audio equipment and uh, audio amplifiers, well known for their monoblock audio amplifiers among audiophiles in the 60s. And they made stuff well into the 70s and then they disappeared. I have another piece of ICO equipment over here from the old uh, vintage electronics find a little over a year ago. This one is a signal generator, model 377. You would use this with the signal tracer. So you inject a signal, say, into an audio amplifier uh, that's having a problem or doesn't work at all. And then you can take the probe here and trace the signal through the circuit. The magic eye will tell you how good the signal is and wherever the signal stops just before that point in the circuit is the problem. It can also be used for uh, RF signals. Um, it has an optional watt meter you can connect to it here for output. It's got a scope output and I actually found an old user manual online in PDF form which was pretty cool. So I haven't even tested this out yet. Uh, in the back is a little place where the date is written, so we'll pull the cover off and take a look at that. But before we do anything, we'll plug it in, and one of three things will happen. It'll either not work, it will work, or magic smoke will come out of the back. I hope that doesn't happen. I hope it works, and all the tubes inside are okay. If they're not, well, we can troubleshoot them with the old tube tester I have here. I've got a couple extra tubes kicking around, and uh, we'll see what we can do with this thing. Should be fun. So let's plug it in and see what happens. All right, we're ready to test. Uh, before I do this, I do want to mention that I have an isolation transformer. Some of you viewers mentioned in my past videos when I was messing around with uh, vacuum tube devices, because of the high voltages, I should not have had it plugged directly into the wall while working on it. I should have had it plugged into an isolation transformer. I got this one a few months ago, and it's actually for... Um, a kind of a proprietary one. It's got different outputs on it. It doesn't really have a wall jack type thing. I've got to put one of those on there. So if I want to do any real work on this internally, I probably will put an outlet on here and then I can use this. What this will do is it isolates you from the mains. So you don't have a direct wire connection to the mains. It goes through the transformer and through induction, you get the same output voltage as input voltage, but you're not directly connected. So therefore, you uh, would receive less of a shock and hopefully it wouldn't be potentially lethal. Well, with that said, let's turn off this power strip and we'll plug this in. Let's see, do we have an on off on this thing even? Uh, I don't even see any kind of an on or off switch. It's pretty much looks to me like it's just plug it in and it's on. So. Um, look around in the back here, don't really see that. I've got an input switch here for RF, audio, or noise. Um, I've got the leads connected to an audio input because that's what I'm going to do to test it initially. Uh, oh, okay, right here it says AC off. Uh, so that must mean that the device is off with that switch off. So let's flick the switch on the power strip. So far so good, no magic smoke. And let's turn it on and we'll uh, put it on trace to start out with. Okay, it's on, it's live. It's gonna take a minute to warm up because there's vacuum tubes in there. The heater has to warm up so that the tubes can work. 
And if it is going to work at all, oh, there we go. We're seeing a nice little green glow on the magic eye. This thing just may be okay. Well, let's connect it up to an audio source. I've got a microphone here. And then we'll get in a little closer with the camera and you can see what happens with the magic eye tube when I put an input into it. So here's the magic eye up close and personal. I had to set the white balance on my camera as such. You see the background looks all really weird purpley. Well, that's the only way I could get the magic eye color to show up properly. I've got the unit hooked up to a LM386 amplifier with a MP3 input. The microphone I had didn't work right, so we'll just go this route. Anyway, let's turn on some Led Zeppelin, and you can see what happens with that little uh, dark wedge at the bottom. It will fluctuate with the audio signal. Now if I turn the gain knob down, you don't really see anything moving there. If I turn it up, it'll get louder and I'll have more fluctuation in that dark wedge. So basically that magic eye is an indicator of the signal that you're picking up. So like I said, you use this in a circuit to trace the signal and troubleshoot a circuit, find out where the signal stops. Great, so it works. Well, now what? Well, I think we should open it up and see what it looks like inside. See what year it was made. That should be written on the back or a little stamp on the back of the chassis. And we can look at the circuitry and see if maybe someone has recapped it with upgraded capacitors. And it'll just be fun to see what's inside there. All right, first up, we'll turn it off and we'll unplug it from power. Disconnect all the leads here, we'll get stuff out of the way, and we'll get started taking this thing apart. All right, overhead camera shot. I'll try to keep my hair out of this video. That seems to be a problem. I just noticed there's a serial number on the front of here, 42336, interesting. It looks like there's eight screws around the perimeter of this front face, and on the back, there's just one screw, and if I take all those screws out, the back cover will basically slide off from the entire chassis, and we can see what's inside. So let's start out by getting these front screws off. They're pretty short screws, just a few turns gets them out of there pretty easy. They're just sheet metal screws. I love the way these older electronic uh, test equipment things are built. They're just super rugged very durable. That um, signal generator I have is a bit rusty and it still works. It was in some wet environment in a garage for years and years. Okay we got one more screw back here. Now this should just slide right off. Something's holding me up. There we go. Just the rubber. The rubber guys. With a little bit of finesse, the whole thing comes right off. We'll pull the cord through. It would be interesting to find out how much these kits sold for when they were brand new. If anybody knows that, post it in the comments section down below. On the Hack a Week webpage, I'll put some links to uh, a few things about this device. Well, there it is. Uh, we've got the uh, 1629 tube here. It's got Ico's name on it, so it's uh, one of their own tubes. And then here we have a EZ90 slash 6x4 tube. That's that one right there. This one is, let's see, is there a schematic in the back of this? No, nope, not in this one. A lot of times there's a schematic and a tube diagram in the back. Uh, I can't quite read all of this one. I think it's a AQ5A. And then this is just a good old 12AX7 uh, preamp tube. And an output transformer. Another transformer for, not sure what, that might be for the heaters in here. 
Uh, this is the main power transformer here. There's a can capacitor right there. That's probably got a few different value capacitors in it. Uh, let's see, it looks like there's four capacitors inside that can. And here's the bottom where all the other circuitry is. And uh, it looks pretty straightforward. There's only, well, let's see, there's only one capacitor right there that, uh, no, that's not, that's a, uh, that's a resistor. So there's really uh, no paper wound capacitors in here to worry about, it looks like. How about that? Looks like there's a fuse in line here on the output for the uh, wattage. Looks like a slow blow fuse. And of course some uh, biasing resistors on all of the transistors. A couple of uh, ceramic capacitors. Not really much to this. It's basically just a simple little audio amplifier and uh, connected up to uh, a tube. Um, I believe that this one monitors the grid voltage of one of those tubes in there. I read up on this a little bit. As I mentioned, you can go on the Hack-A-Week website on the page for this and find all the links to the information I found out about this. Uh, it's pretty cool. Um, I may end up using this at some point in the future on uh, an amplifier or other device along with the signal tracer. In fact, I have a guitar amplifier here that uh, has a few problems someone wanted me to look at for them. So maybe in a future episode we'll do, uh, we'll do something where I troubleshoot that amp and put this and the signal generator to work. Well, let's put it all back together now. It's in really good shape. So pretty easy, just uh, reverse the whole disassembly procedure. The only tricky part was getting the uh, chassis past that one transformer on the top. Oh, the date. Wow, almost forgot about that. Um, I don't see a manufacturer date on the back of it. So I guess I could look it up by the serial number and find it out that way. Let's see if we can do that. I really love these things with the magic eye tube. That green glow is just very mesmerizing to look at. It's almost comforting in a strange way if you're a geek. Uh, hopefully this brought back a few memories to some of you who maybe had uh, fathers or uncles that had these in the garage or some of you guys that are my age or older probably used these if you were ham radio operators or electronics technicians. Um, this old stuff is quite usable. If you come across any of it, buy it up. It's, it's pretty neat to have. It's kind of fun to preserve. I'll add this one to the collection over here behind me. Probably uh, nestle it right in next to its cousin, the Ico uh, signal generator. And as I mentioned earlier in a future video, I will probably put both of these pieces of test equipment to use working on that guitar amplifier I have. It belongs to a friend and it sounds a little distorted, so maybe I can find the location in the circuit where the problem lies. Of course, I'll need the schematic for that so that I can trace through and follow only the audio signal and not get into some of the operating voltages. We don't want to go probing in there and hurt anything. You have to be careful with stuff like that. If you do any work with one of these uh, and it's plugged in, use an isolation transformer like the one I showed you earlier. I've got to get that one uh, up and running the way it should be so that if I do any further work on these, I can protect myself. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'd like to say thanks for all the donations. I've received some uh, pretty generous ones lately. Thanks a lot. It really helps out. And thanks for all of the congratulations on last week's video with Lisa's uh, engagement ring. We're pretty happy and we're having a lot of fun planning the wedding for next year. Well, that's about it for this one. Thanks for watching. And until next time. Every year there's always somebody that's got some electronics or <clears throat> and every year somebody shows up usually with some kind of newer or old electronics and uh, yeah.